Welcome, one and all, in here, out there, everyone watching from low orbit to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's only April 12th, 2023. The 2024 election is still 573 days away. <laughs> so let's get into it. Today, <laughs> is it just today? Last night, we learned that Chicago will host the 2024 Democratic <laughs> National Convention. Come on, baby. Hey. Don't you want to go? Hey. This is great news, because Chicago is my town, baby. I love the people. I love the lake. I love the pizza that looks like an above-ground pool. I love any place where it's okay to publicly utter the phrase, I want my beef wet. <laughs> I want my beef wet, actually. Of course, this won't be the Windy City's first Democratic convention. Chicago is also famously where the DNC devolved into the most disturbing scenes of political chaos in history. Of course, I'm talking about the 1996 DNC's brutal macaraning. <laughs> They also tried that at the RNC, but the delegates who macarena were immediately deported. <laughs> Speaking... Uh, I know, sad. It's very sad. <laughs> Speaking of Chicago, Ireland, where President Biden is on a diplomatic visit. As soon as he landed in Dublin, Biden showed off his gift of gab, regaling Irish firefighters with this story. Lightning struck my home. Literally all four floors, that thick smoke. And then it saved my life, saved my wife. I wasn't there. Right. My cat and my Corvette. That's no malarkey, Jack. I'll tell you. Now, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You guys are the greatest. You, you folks saved everything that matters. Wife, life, cat, vet, okay? <laughs> also, my funny calendar of cats driving Corvettes to the vet, okay? <laughs> Little Mr. February just says, meow, meow, vroom, vroom. Can't make that stuff up. Okay, fellas, great to see you. Gotta go meet the king of the leprechaun steals Lucky Charms. Be right back. I was gone for a minute. Was Joe Biden just here? <laughs> While Biden is there to mark the anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, it's also, in many ways, a personal trip to a place he loves. And it turns out our former president is also in his happy place, appearing on Fox News. Last night, uh, the former sat down with Tucker Carlson, who, thanks to revelations from the Dominion lawsuit, we now know hates the president passionately, <laughs> privately texting that he's a demonic force. <laughs> Harsh, accurate words. <laughs> but uh, let's see how Tucker uh, referred to the demon last night. For a man who is caricatured as an extremist, we think you'll find what he has to say moderate, sensible, and wise. That... That is an impressive flip-flop. Many caricature Cthulhu as pre-Euclidean monstrosity that emerges from the briny deep to devour man's mind, but I think you'll find his face tentacles are quite moderate, and he has a chance to bring America together in his cartilaginous maw of madness. The ex-president rambled about uh, a lot of subjects, like the withdrawal from Afghanistan. He attacked Biden's decision-making. And then he unveiled a brand-new military advisor. I did a little skit with a five-year-old kid. I said, let me ask you, here's the situation. I explained the situation. I said, would you take the military out first, or would you take it out last? I take it out last, five-year-old. Totally. <laughs> Totally normal conversation to have with a five-year-old. <laughs> we, we all, we've all had them. Yeah. We've all had those conversations. Reminds me of that famous Dr. Seuss book, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish. Why didn't Johnson see the Tet Offensive coming? <laughs> he also... He also harped on the dangers of nuclear proliferation, or as he wisely put it... The biggest problem we have in the whole world... It's not global warming. It's nuclear warming. The Biden people know the power of nuclear weapons. They now control our arsenal. They don't seem worried about this. Uh, that's because they don't understand life. They don't understand whatever it is that you have to understand. <laughs> <laughs> that is a broad...
It's a broad, fairly all-encompassing philosophy. It goes <laughs> all the way back to the words of Rene Descartes, I think, therefore, I understand whatever it is I have to think. <laughs> oh, there's, there's news about America's favorite dessert topping, guns. It turns out... <laughs> A popular handgun, the Sig Sauer P320 pistol, fires without anyone pulling the trigger. Finally, hands-free firearms. <laughs> Siri, set my alarm to go off at 6 a.m., then set my gun to shoot my alarm. <laughs> She's on it. Unlike, <laughs> unlike a lot of other handguns on the market, the P320 has no external safeties to prevent it from firing in cases of malfunction. In other words, it's basically cocked at all times. Also the name of a popular Pornhub channel. <laughs> turns out, turns out, all right. Turns out a gun, turns out, no, don't encourage, no. Siri, erase search history. <laughs> I'm sorry too, Siri. Turns out a gun that is always ready to fire is a bad idea, but Sig Sawyer insists their guns aren't a problem. In response to public questions, they offered a few defenses, including unintentional discharges are not uncommon, and they incur with several types of firearms besides the P320. That's not a great defense. Look, I know our gas station's hot dogs cause violent intestinal distress, but to be fair, most gas station hot dogs cause violent intestinal distress. And if you want mine, you'll have to pry it from my cold, dead... Oh, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> Joe Biden just here? Is Joe Biden just here? So there are some defective guns out there. All the government has to do is recall them, right? Ha ha, no. <laughs> Turns out firearms are one of the few products that are exempt from federal consumer product safety regulations. By doing that, they're admitting that by the existence of a gun, we're throwing our hands in the whole safety thing. And thousands of other products have been recalled for lesser reasons than spontaneous shooting people. In 2013, <laughs> a toy chicken was recalled for being too loud. <laughs> In 1998, pencils with the slogan, too cool to do drugs, were recalled because when sharpened, the message became, cool to do drugs, then simply, do drugs. That's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, no. But to be fair, if you do a whole pencil's worth of math problems, you've earned those drugs. Oh, speaking about doing something about yeah. guns, we also have an update from Tennessee. You'll recall that last Thursday, Republicans in the Tennessee House expelled two Democrats, Justin Jones and Justin J. Pearson, for using a megaphone on the House floor in support of an anti-gun protest. Well, Monday evening, the Metropolitan Nashville Council unanimously voted to appoint Jones back to his seat. Yeah, baby. Which is pretty great. That is pretty nice, especially because now that he's technically a new member, Jones can file up to 15 bills, and he has said that each of those bills would have to do with gun reform. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Except for his first one, HB252, ha-ha, suck it, you dummies. <laughs> <laughs> and just a few hours ago, the other expelled member of the Tennessee legislature, Justin J. Pearson, was also reinstated. <laughs> pretty nice, man. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Yeah. That breaking headline again, Justin, Justin, Justin. <laughs> We have some footage here of Pearson after he was voted back in by the Shelby County Board of Commissioners. Let's get back to work! Yeah! Now, I'm no body language expert, but I think he might have been a little excited there. <laughs> so good work, Tennessee Republicans. You didn't silence these guys. They're still in the legislature. You made them heroes of a movement and national political figures. I'm surprised you're not in favor of gun reform because you just shot yourself in the nuts. 